power of his might be strong and courageous those words are we've made them into a song and it comes from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament where God is encouraging and um, you know strengthening Joshua the next leader after Moses and he was telling him be strong and courageous praise you know, God be not afraid I mean, those words just bring hope to our hearts. Yeah. By saying, Lord, I thank you. I can be strong and courageous. Mm. You know, in any situation that I face, your strength is with me. Your courage is with me. Mm. That's what Joshua was saying. We should uh, yeah. see that scripture. It's in the book of Joshua chapter 1. And, um, you know, several times the Lord, you know, because he was going to be the next leader. And he had to lead so many people, yeah. a multitude of you know, people out of, you know, out of the wilderness and bring them into the promised land that God had for them. Mm. And so the Lord strengthens Joshua and he says in verse 5, There shall not be any man able to stand against you. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And then the Lord says, I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. And verse 6, he says, Be strong and of good courage. And then verse 7 again, he says, only be strong and courageous mm. and, uh, and very courageous, not just courageous, very courageous. Yeah, because, you know, Joshua was the new <coughs> leader. You know, previously Moses, he had, you know, led the people of Israel for a very long time. Mm. And now that he had died, you know, Joshua had to take over. But he said, God, if you're not with me, if you're not going to help me, I'm not going to do this on my own. And God immediately says, Joshua, nobody's going to fail you. Mm. You know, he says, I will be with you just like I was with Moses. That's right. My promise was not only to Moses, but it's also to you as well. Mm. And he says, be strong in the next part and of good courage. He repeats that, I think, over and over again, yeah. just to keep filling his heart with assurance. Jo yeah, you, you know, don't have to even, fear anything. Even in 
uh, our lives sometimes you know we feel fear and we feel you know i can't do this mm. and you know maybe it's it's to take on a big task right. in your life and the lord wants to encourage you today and say <clears throat> that you can be strong and courageous why because i'm with you i will never leave you nor forsake you and the lord is our best comfort he is and you know the best part is joshua believe those words mm. he said lord i thank you yes i'm going to receive this because in the next part it says joshua immediately he started to take over the new journey with the mm. children of Israel. Yeah. He didn't say, Lord, you know, this is too tough. I can't. He just believed that word and went along with God. Mm. And he was a he was truly a man of faith. Mm. And even if nobody is there around you <clears throat> to encourage you and to strengthen you, to speak words of comfort to you, remember the Lord is always there with you. Yeah. And he will never leave you and he will always strengthen you, always encourage you. And this this is really a good word to say over and over again. Just like previously we saw that our confidence is in the promises of God. This mm. is a really good promise to say over and over again <coughs> because it will strengthen your heart. Yeah. Be strong. So you can say, "Lord, I'm going to be strong and very courageous. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be afraid. Neither am I going to be dismayed because you have promised that you will not fail me nor forsake me." Mm. That's a good promise to fill our heart. Yeah. In fact, we should um as we're talking about rising up with confidence in this episode we like to talk about these very words be strong and courageous mm. and i want to take you to numbers the book of numbers 13 verse 30 now there's something that will always try to hinder you from being strong and courageous and that is fear which is basically unbelief that is not believing the word of god now in this story we see before Joshua took over Moses was still alive and he had told you know he had sent 12 spies to go and check out the land that they were about to possess because they had been in the wilderness all this time and God said now I want to take you to my promised land so according to the word of the Lord Moses he sent 12 spies to check out the land and we see after they checked out the land when they came back you know 10 of them they gave a negative report in other words they said you know Moses the land that God has promised us is really good it's prosperous but there are giants in the land mm -hmm. you know and we saw ourselves like grasshoppers in their sight we were like nothing when we saw these people and now the other two who were with these spies was Caleb and Joshua their report was very different. Mm. Let's see Numbers 13, verse 30. Now remember, God had already promised <coughs> these people that he was going to give them the land. Mm. He said, this is the land that I've promised you. But he wanted them to believe that word. Mm. Just like earlier we saw, our confidence is in the promise of God. We saw Abraham. He didn't have to know how God was going to give him a son. All he had to do was say, Lord, I believe your word. Mm. And God wanted that same faith with these people. But, you know, some of them believed and some of them didn't. Let's see what Caleb and Joshua say. Now, 10 of them, altogether there were 12 who went to check out the land. 10 of them disbelieved the word. But Caleb and Joshua came up with a different report. Let's see verse 30. It says, And Caleb, he still the people before Moses, and he said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. He said, We are well able to overcome it. You know, you're seeing giants, but we are seeing ourselves strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. God has given us this land, then we're going to take it. That's right. It doesn't matter what's in front of us. You know, <coughs> I love the words that he says. We are well able to overcome it. Mm. We saw the previous verse in 1 John 5, 1, that we are born of God and we can overcome the world. That's right. And Caleb said, we're going to overcome any situation. Mm. And you would have thought people would have believed those encouraging words. Well, we'll see what they said. The next part in verse 31. Now remember, all these people are gathered together and the report is coming from these 12 spies. Caleb and Joshua believed the word, but the rest, they doubted. Mm. 
Mm. This is what they said in verse 31. It says, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And verse 32, the first part says, And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched. So, ten of them, they looked at the situation that was too difficult. It's too hard. We are not able. We are not as strong as them. How can mm. we go and take this land? And Joshua and Caleb, they said, no, we are well able. <coughs> now you're seeing two reports here. One is a report of faith and a report of unbelief. Mm. But the sad part about it is the majority believed the unbelief. Yeah. Only two people stood up in faith and said, if God has given us this land, let's go and take it. Mm. Because they believed the word of the Lord. Yeah. And the others, you know, they heard the word of the Lord, but you know, because of what they saw and they were convinced with that. Right. They didn't want to follow the Lord. And if you notice the words that Caleb says, we are well able. Last time we saw <coughs> that God is able to do what he's promised. But then there's this other side where we got to know that we are well able to overcome it. Mm. Just as much as God is able, we are well able. Yeah. But you know, there is one hindrance that will come by to stop you from being strong and courageous. And that is unbelief. Yeah. Unbelief will shut you down. It will cause you to live inside a box yeah. and you know, tell you, you can't do it. You're not mm. well able. And these people, they, it caused so much of fear in the hearts of the people, mm. right? Twelve of them went. Two of them believed the word of the Lord. Ten of them doubted. And the word that was brought out in unbelief was what the majority believed. Mm. See and, what the next part says. Is simply yeah. believing what God didn't say. Mm. Believing, you know, what you feel what you can see exactly and the unbelief report it caused so much of fear in the hearts of the people mm. that's what unbelief does yeah. but God doesn't want you to be in unbelief any longer you don't have to see yourself as a weakling as somebody who's not able to overcome situations in life yeah Joshua and Caleb stood up sometimes you might be in the minority you know everybody's not going to cheer you and stand up with you and say you're going to do it Sometimes it could be your own self rising up in confidence. That's right. But that's okay. God's standing with you. Mm. And when you stand with God, that's a majority. Mm. That's, that's good news to hear. Yeah. And in the end, we see that it was Caleb and Joshua and the believing ones who obtained the promised land. Mm. And, yeah. and these people here, they, the ten spies who believed the negative report, and they said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than us. And how did they know that? Mm. You know, just by looking at these people, they said they are stronger than us. Yeah. But if we see in the book of Joshua, the second time when they are sent, these people are sent to spy out the land, you know, they get a different report from the people of the land. Yeah. In Joshua chapter 2, uh, this is after Moses has passed away and Joshua now is taking over as leader. And... Uh, <clears throat> in Joshua chapter 2, verse 9, it says, uh, so this is the time when Joshua sends two spies. Yeah. Instead of just sending, you know, a whole bunch of people, he sends two people who he knows have the faith that he has. Mm. And he sends them into the land that the Lord has told them, this is where you are going to possess. And he, uh, so... They go into this, the backstory of this is they, Joshua sends these two spies and they go into the city of Jericho, where, which is the place that, you know, God told them to destroy and all that. And, you know, in that place they find a woman who was named Rahab and she hides these two spies and keeps them. And, you know, she tells them, I know in verse 9 she says, I know that the Lord has given you the land mm. and that your terror is fallen upon us. Now this is the viewpoint of the enemies of God's people. This Now earlier we saw the children of Israel giving the report of what they saw. Mm. And this is now the report of the enemy's point of view. Yeah. So she says, um, and, I, and I know that the Lord has given you this land and your terror is fallen upon us and all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Mm. This is what she said. Yeah. You know, the children of Israel, the ten spies, their report was, those people are stronger than us. Mm. But here she says, we faint because of you. Yeah. 
And he said, and she continues, We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, and when you came out of Egypt, and what you did, you know, unto the two kings of the Amorites, and all these other kings whom you destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, as soon as we heard the great miracles that your God did for you, our hearts did melt. Yeah. Our hearts did exactly. melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, He is God in heaven above yeah. and in earth. And so if you're just tuning in today, you might be wondering, what are these stories? Well, we're taking two stories from the Old Testament. The first story is where we see God had promised to give a land to the children of Israel. Mm. And before that, Moses had sent <coughs> 10 spies to check out this land. And two of them come with a good report, believing the word of God, that this land was for them. But 10 of them come with an unbelieving report. And this other story we're reading is now, you know, it's, it's been years that have passed by mm. and God has given them the land. And now we see Joshua, he's a leader. And God had, you know, sent them to go and check out another land, mm -hmm. another area, which is Jericho. Yeah. And so when they go and check out this land, two spies, they begin to see the report that people have of them. The enemies. The enemies. You know, they saw <coughs> the God that these children of Israel were believing. Mm. You don't have to be afraid of what others think of you. Because mm. when you have God living on the inside of you, people are going to see that. In reality, yeah. the enemy is afraid of us. That's right. More than we are of him. Mm. Because we are mightier and yeah. he knows God is on our side. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us mm. and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. So our power is actually greater than the enemy's power. Yeah. And so we encourage you to read these stories in detail. We've just taken portions of it, but we're showing you that sometimes we, what we think others are thinking of us is actually not what they're thinking. Mm. The enemies were truly afraid of the God that these people served. And today you can know that you can rise up with confidence because yeah. God lives on the inside of you. <clears throat> but you've got to make a decision. You're not going to walk in unbelief. Mm -hmm. Because unbelief is going to stop the power of God working in you. Mm. You can rise up like Joshua and Caleb and say, Lord, I'm going to be strong and courageous. Amen. No matter what the situation is, yeah. I am well able to overcome it. That's right. Even years later, Joshua, when he was an old man, he was um, about 85. Now remember, right in the beginning, he believed the word of the Lord and possessed the land. Mm -hmm. And now it's been many years since he's been in this promised land. And this is what he says in um, Joshua 14, 7. He says, I was 40 years when Moses sent me to check out the land. And then he says, I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Verse 8 says, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, mm. but I wholly followed the Lord my God. <clears throat> Joshua says, Even after many years of being in the land God had promised me, I still look back and I remember I believed the word of the Lord. Yeah. Despite all these unbelieving people around me, I believe what God said. Mm. He was so full of courage that even at you know such an old age, he was still able to recall the goodness mm. of God. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, living in courage is so wonderful. And you know, the children of Israel, the point where they, you know, bring the negative report and all that. You know, Caleb and Joshua, on the other hand, they they tell these people <clears throat> in chapter fourteen, verse nine. It says. They both these Caleb and Joshua. They say, "Only rebel ye not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, yes. and their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not; mm. they are bread for us." Yeah, you know that's like saying, you know, it's it's a s simple task. We can take it. Mm. You know, all you need to do is rebel not, and that is go yeah. against the word of the Lord. That's right. And so today, what is, you know, the big mountain that you're facing? In this case, Joshua and Caleb and the rest of the children of Israel, they had to go into a new land. And at that moment, we see that when they came back, when Joshua and Caleb came back with the spies, they brought two reports. One was, you know, believing the word of the Lord and the others didn't. 
but we see those who believe the word possess the land. Mm -hmm. And it looked like a mountainous situation, I mean, moving into a new land. But God said, that's my land for you, and you got to take it. Mm. And so whatever it is you're facing right now, you may be like Joshua and Caleb. You may be the only one who's standing up in courage when everybody around you is full of unbelief. They say, well, you're not able. You don't have the you know, proper skills and abilities. You've never done it. You're not born into the right family or under the right star. Mm. You know, all these negative voices come to steal our courage, to put us down. But you don't have to be like that. You can rise up like Joshua and Caleb and say, we are well able to overcome it. Mm. Any situation in life, because God is on our side, we can overcome it. Yeah. You know, that could just be the starting point of you saying, I'm going to rise up. I am an overcomer. Mm. I am well able to take it. Yeah. That is Knowing so encouraging. Knowing God's ability in us. Yeah. So today, whatever situation you are facing, you can believe that God is on your side. Just like Joshua and Caleb believed the report of the Lord, mm. you can say, I'm going to stand up. I am well able to overcome it and rise up with confidence. Be strong and courageous for the Lord is with you. Amen. Amen.